right guys I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the, the trails and that there are so many different varieties of them out there and some that probably have not been considered by most people yet <clears throat> my observations over the last uh, seven eight nine years um, have shown that these trails are exceedingly uh, keen on uh, unusual meteorological phenomena we see in the sky. In this particular image, this was sunset last December 12th, so uh, nearly a year ago. And uh, out over the western horizon as the sun was setting, we had these kind of unusual iridescent glowing uh, ripples. And where we find these kind of ripples, especially when they're not terrain induced, which is about 98% of them, um, we find that the planes are very, very interested in those particular spots, and precisely so. This particular uh, aircraft and, and, and small trail, it's not a big chem trail, it's a small trail. All you have to do is see the glowingness or, or that trail hit through that spot, and then from space they can watch the particulates uh, begin to begin to move and undulate, and it probably gives the weather makers a grip or a hold on the atmosphere with this additional particulate that's been... Um, uh, introduced into the sky. So we step back, this goes back a couple of years, and we can see some previous trails at, at all kinds of different wavelengths showing up in the sky, but one particular point of radiance where we begin to see the clouds, you know, circulating, uh, circulating out, and this is with uh, kind of a shorter wavelength because you can see the clouds are relatively close together even in their in their concentric circle pattern, and then this train radiate, or trail radiating out, and then some other additional ripplings uh, that, that have been captured with this particular photograph, but we need those trails there to ascertain what the atmosphere is doing. I'm going to step back and take a little bit of a different direction. This is off the coast of, of the United Kingdom, off, off the coast of England. And what we see is it looks like a whole bunch of, uh, of contrails, but it isn't. These are indeed ship trails. So we have another platform for delivery for these trails, and this one uh, focuses primarily in dealing with and modeling, measuring and modeling the marine layer of the atmosphere. And this also changes the radiation budget of the planet. If you can obscure the sea surface with white or very, very bright cloud cover, then you reflect energy back off into space. And if the powers that be are uh, keenly interested in global warming, this is uh, an exquisite tool used to reflect that energy back into space. And it's funny because all, with uh, the second release of uh, ClimateGate uh, emails from these, glo uh, these global climate scientists concerned about the decline in keeping their political mandate of global warming at the forefront, it's odd because they seem to be unaware that there's this other black operation in progress which is uh, profoundly impacting our climate. So as we flip through it, we're going to look at some other trails here. You can see this one has some waves, and I'm kind of sorry for the reflection here, but uh, it's, it's daylight. We've got two places where the trail has been bumped, if you will. And it's interesting because those are the places where the trail is fluorescing. And I don't know if that's a correct term, but it's a term I'm using. The trails are brighter in these particular push locations where there is some external input, whether that input is from... From technology or, or from the natural waviness in the atmosphere, I don't know that it really matters. It's there. And then in time, we can see the trails and the powders within beginning to disperse out. And uh, often, because I'm, I'm in, a mountain local, in, a, in a mountain location and dealing with mountain wave clouds, we see the planes keenly interested in these wave clouds. In fact, we've got a wavelength showing up right here. We have a break in the trail, then we have an identical shape of the break of the trail, and this would be a, a wavelength. Now, whether we're dealing with ELF waves or extremely low frequency waves being introduced into the atmosphere, or if it's something etheric in nature, which I believe happens as well, we're beginning to see, and, and we can use these trails to measure off some of these uh, very curious wavelengths. Where the, where the clouds begin to glow and become iridescent when they first form electrically or etherically, the planes are right there. They're always right there. <clears throat> These planes are at the leading edge and uh, kind of uh, at the forefront of where we begin to see this modification occurring. Something else that uh, some time-lapse photography provided me with some insight to is when we have these older trails like this one here and there's a profound or a very sharp edge here where we've got some of the particulates accumulating but then there's a break point and this tells a story and we'll see some of that uh, in other some of the other imagery we're going to get to. Again, we've got other 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 breakpoints right here. And what's 
interesting. This is kind of a cool because we've got uh, almost looks like a little caterpillar, a little a little uh, sea anemone, you know, wavelength or uh, fins uh, blowing in the wind. But back to this guy, we've got a trail with an angle here. The angle changes because we've got some indent or some push that's happening here. And the trail marks the point at which that push of that indentation begins. And so what I've, what I've observed is that where we have trails changing the geometry, changing their shape, a secondary trail will come along and mark it precisely so. This one is fairly subtle, but we still have a break. We still have a change in the direction. And this other other trail, again, laid at 90 degrees, so we've got our, our straight on 90-degree uh, square axis is, is showing up as well. Here's another uh, photographic example of that same day where we have um, a little wedge being created by, by these two trails. And a third one comes along, and, he, and you can see he turns, the plane turns, so we can come right through and precisely slice this angled opening of uh, of these uh, pre uh, these previous trails that have not been laid down more than more than about a minute or so, and again when we get towards sunset and also in a sunrise, uh, the the way that the angle that the, the sky is illuminated allows for um some pretty spectacular photography. Here's another trail. This one was maybe four or five minutes old before another plane it literally came out down and then kind of spiraled around and then continued off in the distance. So we have. The behavior of the atmosphere revealed by this earlier trail and then a second plane comes along and then seals the deal if you will or uh, marks off and here's how it how it continues to deform you can see it it, 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 it curling through another another uh, set of trails on that same day we've got a gap here this is significant and then a previous trail being flown here and at this mark at this boundary we see this other trail literally get get collapsed and scrunched to this point, but it's piling up right here. The particles are collecting at this boundary. So we have a, a compression effect here as this tail is collapsed and, and, and squished on itself, if you will. And it's up in here. There's all kinds of, uh, of EM energies introduced into the atmosphere. And so a thin, thin layer of, of cirrus clouds are, are, uh, are measuring it. Here's another trail. As we look closer again, you can see the same thing. We've got a layer of clouds. Some phenomena here is not allowing it to fluoresce, but we have the collapse with the squish of the trail. So more often than not, we find these trails very, very, uh, it's not where they're flown, it's what happens after they're flown into the sky. And you can see they begin to, they begin to collapse and it gives the weather makers a very, very good idea of what the sky is doing. Here's another tick, but on, on the older trail through here, you can see there's, there's literally a, 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 bit of a, a bit of a spread in here. And that warranted a secondary or, or a cross flight. And there's another shot of that. So you can see how the trails are, are literally spreading out of the wind. This, this spread is, is more profound than on this side of this particular tick. So the question is then why? That we have these geometries, these resonances that are sta established in the atmosphere by the weather makers. And we begin to watch for resonant pairs of holes. We've got the Great Lakes states here, we've got Ontario, and then western Minnesota. So this particular one, there's a, a profound separation in these resonance holes. And these holes are beginning to show up at all kinds of, of, of geographic scales, from, from just a few miles apart to literally thousands of miles apart these harmonics are established and then the trails are necessary as they begin to thread the clouds out as they begin to spread out of, uh, of an, uh, out of an advancing storm and you can see the geometry that the trails and the resonance patterns make this is out over North Dakota I believe uh, as, as, as this cloud as the storm is, is it literally engineered as it moves on into place another pair of pair of holes with some thunderheads out over the Oklahoma Panhandle. And as we look closer, especially in the high resolution satellite imagery, you begin to see these resonance pairs of holes. And keeping these holes all in alignment is the process of the trails. So that when these RF patterns, radio frequency patterns begin to appear in the sky, they occur and the energy that they impart into the atmosphere 
is in the correct location for their goals. There's another shot of infrared imagery. This one goes back to uh, what, 31 March 06 over Texas. And you, you could literally see the resonances, how we have a plus and a minus, a minus and a plus. And it's, it's everywhere. We have this resonant resultant geometry and we, it requires the aircraft in the sky. And this is a Thai, <laughs> Thai airlines, you know, L1011, L you know, flying the trails. But, you know, it's my opinion that every airline has been impacted and co-opted by the powers that be. And when you look at this, this regular looking thunderstorm head or cold front moving through Utah, you can see all the texture in the clouds and how it is so um, engineered, I suppose, is the kindest way to put it. Because there's just nothing about this that's, that's natural. Off the coast of California, and we begin, we have another incident of ship trails, of profound ship trails, as they're engineering the marine layer and watching that marine layer before it is, is picked up by an inbound Pacific storm, which is just out of view here as it heads inland. And this was, uh, what, June 20, 2008, over the Northern California coast at about 9 in the morning local time. So we have many agendas for the chemtrails, and we also have something new called ship trails. You can kind of see the, the chemtrails on top running, running this way and with the ship trails underneath as they begin to engineer the environment ahead, ahead of an inbound storm. So we're at a war, and it is a weather war, and the chemtrails are a chemical fallout from the action we see in the sky. This is Scott Stevens from weatherwars.info.